Hello, I'm Tristan Andrew, and as you are about to hear, the composer featured in this survey brings a lighter side to British Christmas art music, including a setting of a famous poem you will surely recognize. I'm talking about the 20th to 21st century British composer Philip Lane. Let me show you what I am talking about. British composer Philip Lane was born in Cheltenham and has spent much of his life there. After studying at Birmingham University, though he is largely self-taught as both a composer and orchestrator, he returned to Cheltenham and between 1975 and 1998, he was on the music staff at the town's ladies' college. Among his many accomplishments, he is a noted authority on the eccentric English composer Lord Berners and is also recognized as something of an expert on the music of Richard Adensel. He has been in much demand to reconstruct the scores of the music for several celebrated British films where the paper scores have been lost and this work has led him into a good deal of original composition work for television and the stage. Lane is noted for his light music compositions and arrangements, as well as his film score works. He began composing at an early age, and by the time he was at Birmingham, was already having compositions played by the BBC Midland Light Orchestra. Virtually, all his orchestral works have been commercially recorded and are currently available worldwide. These were, are often written in the style of British light music, being largely tonal and featuring lush orchestrations. For example, his London Salute was written to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the BBC and has been adopted as the unofficial theme of the BBC Concert Orchestra. Lane has composed a number of works themed around the Christmas season. Here we look at the wassail dances, three orchestral extemporizations based on the Somerset Wassail, Yorkshire Wassail, and the Gloucestershire Wassail. Three Christmas pictures, the latter a compilation of individual original works, his overture on French carols, and in 2007, his setting of Clement Moore's The Night Before Christmas for narrator and orchestra, the commercial recording of which featured Stephen Fry as narrator. Wassail Dances is amongst Lane's earliest orchestral works and was written for the Gloucestershire Youth Orchestra and their conductor, Tony Hewitt Jones. It is based on three traditional wassails or drinking songs prevalent at Christmas time in the English counties of Somerset and Gloucestershire in the southwest and Yorkshire in the north. Wassail is an ancient toast, meaning something like good health, 
to mankind and livestock. Mold, cider, and beer was drunk as part of these festivities, often held on the twelfth night of Christmas. The tradition of wassailing is still observed in parts of England to this day. However, it has been largely superseded by caroling. All three movements take their theme and stretch it to its rhythmic and harmonic limits within given parameters. While the outer ones maintain the bucolic nature of the original tune, the central one, based on one of at least two from that county, is more restrained, but rather than causally pastoral throughout, has a deliberate and decided edge to the scoring that reflects the harsher landscape of its northern origins.
The three Christmas pictures were written at various times in the 1980s. The first, Sleigh Bell Serenade, has been the composer's most widely performed work, having been played all over Britain, and in fact, on every inhabited continent, and was first commercially recorded in Australia in 1986. A number of years later, words were added to produce a choral version. The work is scored for full orchestra with a vast array of percussion, including Chinese blocks, whip, tubular bells, and the inevitable sleigh bells. Sleigh Bell Serenade takes its place alongside Frederick Delius's Winter Night, Sergei Prokofiev's Troika from Lieutenant Kije, and Leroy Anderson's Sleigh Ride. It is a perfect evocation of a journey we would all like to make on an evening through the forests when the snow was deep and crisp and even. The second movement, Starlight Lullaby, is a truly beautiful miniature. This music conjures images of both baby Jesus and excited children desperately trying to get off to sleep on Christmas Eve before Santa Claus makes his special deliveries. In spite of the nod to Henry Mancini's Moon River, this is a well-worked-out piece of music that deserves to be heard alongside the more famous first movement. Starlight's Lullaby was first performed in 1990 and also has both orchestral and choral versions. While Christmas Eve Waltz from 1989 remains an entirely orchestral piece. And that's the final impression. It evokes a time and place long gone, if it ever really existed, except in the mind of Charles Dickens. This piece sounds like it came from the 1950s and is a perfect pastiche of the light music genre.
According to Lane, the idea for the overture on French carols sprang from a visit to Bayeux in the weeks leading up to Christmas in 2001, when carols were being played through loudspeakers in the streets to accompany seasonal shoppers. There did not seem to be an orchestral work based exclusively on French carols in regular use. So, to mark a return to writing for the orchestra in the concert hall, after a period of 13 years, the overture was given its premiere by the BBC Concert Orchestra under Brian Kay, to whom it was dedicated in Huddersfield Town Hall in December 2003. The carols employed include, in order, Il est né le divin enfant, Patapin, Noé Novelle, Quelle est odeur agréable, and Masters in this Hall. Some of these are brought back together in the final section with Quites Pester as additional counterpoint in the horns. Thank you. 
now comes what you have been waiting for. A visit from St. Nicholas, more commonly known as the night before Christmas, and Twas the Night Before Christmas, from its first line, is a poem first published in 1823 and later attributed to Clement Clark Moore, who claimed authorship in 1837. The poem has been called, arguably, the best known verses ever written by an American, and is largely responsible for some of the conceptions of Santa Claus from the mid-19th century to today. It has had a massive effect on the history of Christmas gift-giving. Before the poem gained wide popularity, American ideas had varied considerably about St. Nicholas and other Christmas-tide visitors. A Visit from St. Nicholas eventually was set to music and has been recorded by many artists. In 2007, Philip Lane composed an orchestral setting for the narration of The Night Before Christmas, most notably recorded with Stephen Fry as the narrator. In this, we see how art music for Christmas has sometimes echoed the tendency with film music to be purely background and mood forming. This should not be considered a degradation of art music, which has always existed to entertain and support humanity in understanding its own endeavors and beliefs. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out of a lawn, there arose such a clatter. I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When, when what to my wandering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. than eagles his coursers they came. And he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen. On Comet, on Trubrin, on Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle mount to the sky, so up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. A 
as I drew in my head and was turning around down the chimney, Saint Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled! His dimples, how merry! His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His raw little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face, and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. <laughs> A wink of his eye, and a twist of his head, soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and filled all the stockings. turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight. Happy Christmas to all! And to all a good night! Ho 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 ho! Ho 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 ho! Lane's affinity for Christmas music provides a counterpoint to his compatriot, John Rutter. Like many composers, Lane demonstrates art music's ability to reflect a full range of societal expectations. Christmas art music is often seen as an expression of the sublime, but with Lane, we find the pleasure of a snowball fight, the laughter of children, and the sweet joy of a dance. In short, music does not have to be serious to be artful. Whereas John Rutter is best known for his vocal compositions, while being equally adept at instrumental works. Lane's reputation is built on his orchestrations, both his own and his reconstructions of others' works. 
he is as comfortable with bringing ancient melodies to modern ears as he is with adapting popular tunes to symphonic instrumentation. I hope you have enjoyed this introduction to the Christmas works of Philip Lane. If your taste for British Christmas music needs more satisfaction, I hope you will take a look at my discussion on John Rutter. In the meantime, Merry Christmas! Now, that should set the mood for Christmas. Please remember to subscribe, comment, and most importantly, keep listening. Have a safe and happy holiday.